Hi and welcome to the to sempre to video tutorial. I'm Andrea Gozzi, technical director at Redmatica, and in this first video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the interface. I will explain the main concepts, and of course, I will also show you how to use the software. For a start, AutoSample 2 is an application for sampling automatically your hardware and software synthesizers and create ready-to-play sample instruments which you can then play in your favorite sampler. So how does it work? Basically, AutoSample 2 sends a series of MIDI notes to the synthesizer at various pitches and velocities, records the audio into new sample files, performs all the required processing and builds new instruments with those samples in a completely automatic way. In designing version 2, we wanted to expand on the concept and add a set of new powerful features as DSP auto looping and then open up to sample to all the most important formats. This means the XS24 for Logic, Mainstage, GarageBand, uh, Contact from native instruments, DigiDesign Structure for Pro Tools and the NNXT sample for Reason. That's not all, as we also wanted to create the simplest and most elegant user interface we could think of. So let's see what we've done, starting from the user interface. When you start AutoSample 2 the first time, this is what you see. It's a single window, but at the top we set the name of the patch we want to create. Then here we set how the sound is going to be sampled. So we have the range of notes on the keyboard that we are going to capture. The note step, which is the interval uh, on the keyboard at which the, the sound will be sampled. We have the range of the velocities we want to capture and the number of velocity layers, we have up to 16. And then here we set the sustain time which will be used to sample each note. Then here we set the format for the sampled files and the format for the instrument files we want to create. Notice how we can select multiple formats at once. This means that the application will build all the different uh, formats in a single session, it's very handy. Here we set the audio and MIDI devices which are going to be used by the application. Here at the bottom we have the VUMeter where we can check the incoming audio levels. We can also click on the VUMeter and see the numerical value of the peak and RMS levels. We can also select uh, the channels which are going to be uh, recorded and notice how we can build instruments by recording up to eight different channels. And then of course the most important user interface element is this one, uh, it's the start button. And that's all. This is what we call the simplified mode. And just as a demo, we're now going to sample a drum machine, which is already connected to this computer, to the input five and six. And we are going to call this the auto sampled kit one. We are going to sample from C2 to C3 every single note as it's a drum machine. So each note has a different sound associated to it. A single velocity layer. This is just a quick demo. There is no need for sustain time as it's a drum machine. And we enable monitoring. So we are going to hear what's happening when we sample the sound and we click start. Now we are asked where the samples and the instrument files will be created. This is already the, the right folder in, in this case, so we select it. And auto sample has sent all the MIDI notes at the various uh, velocities, recorded the audio and built the instrument for us. We can quit auto sampler mm, as there's nothing else we have to do here. And then we can go and uh, see uh, where the instruments have been created. So here we have uh, all the instrument files in various formats. These are the samples we just captured. And let's try playing this kit in contact. We take the contact file and then we play from the master keyboard we have here. And that's great because we just converted the, our drum machine into a contact instrument. Let's try this on uh, Logic 2. We 
create a new software track. We instantiate an XS24 sampler. And here we have our new sound. We can open the editor and see all the mapped zones. Play from our master keyboard again. So yes, it works in Logic too. And of course, uh, it works also in Pro Tools with Structure and in Reason with the NNXT. Exactly as we have uh, this simplified mode in Auto Sampler, we also have uh, an Advanced mode. And you switch to it by clicking this blue button. In Advanced mode, we have a Mapping Matrix view here where we can see exactly what is going to be sampled on the keyboard. We also have a virtual keyboard at the top which can be used to play the external synthesizer. Of course, we have to enable MIDI True for that to work. We also have some additional settings here at the bottom, including auto looping, auto looping functions. And then we also have some other advanced parameters here at the left. For this second example, we want to sample more than uh, one single sound from uh, a synthesizer. In this case, we have connected to the computer. So we open the patch table and then we sample from patch 20 to 22. I'm going to sample them from C2 to C5 and I will sample every six notes. Notice how the mapping matrix view is updating in real time as I'm editing parameters. So it's very, very intuitive. And let's capture, let's say, three velocity levels. And I will also uh, capture them most slanted toward the high velocities even more because actually most of the changes in sound on keyboards happens here at the top of velocity. In this case I also want to auto loop uh, the sounds so enable the auto loop function with the Penrose machine and I'm saying that I want the loop to start at about 50% of the length of each sample and go till the end. We will have an attack and then we have a loop. I want to have a sustain time of 12 seconds because I think that it will give me a better result. That's it, we have to save this project now. We call this uh, multiple patches. We enable again monitoring as we want to hear what's being sampled. And then we click start. As you can see in advanced mode, we see which zone is being sampled here in red and we have a real-time display of the recorded audio. Very well, Auto Sample 2 just finished, so we can quit the application again. We can go and check the files, you see all the patches. Let's try this in contact. Let's play a chord. I'm now playing a single note. Notice how you cannot hear the loop, and uh, this is because uh, AutoSim2 uses the Peros machine auto looping technology, which is something which comes from uh, Redmatic Akima Pro 2, and it's a phenomenal auto looping technology for, for most sounds, so it's really giving fantastic results. Okay, now let's try something different again. We have seen how uh, we can auto sample hardware instruments, a single patch, multiple patches. So now let's see how we can auto sample software instruments. There are two different ways for sampling a software instrument with uh, auto sample 2. The classic way, which is the one used in auto sample version 1, uses a freely available virtual audio device, uh, it's named Soundflower, to connect the audio out from the synth host 
to the audio input in AutoSampler. In this way you can route the audio out from your synth directly to the audio input of AutoSampler without going through an external audio device. Uh, similarly, for MIDI we use the internal interapplication MIDI driver in OS X which is a way to patch the MIDI out of an application directly to the MIDI in of another. And we will use Logic for this example. So we start Logic, we create an instrument track and uh, we are loading the ES2. We are using the default preset. We want to sample this one in this case. We have to set the audio out to Sunflower. We start Auto Sampler. We set it to record from Sunflower. We record channels 1 and 2, which are the ones coming from Logic. We send the MIDI to the ISC MIDI driver. If you don't see it, it's because it's not enabled. In that case, you should go to the Audio MIDI Setup application, open the MIDI window, and make sure that the device is online. Then uh, here we set uh, the range of notes we want to capture to C5, just a quick demo, single layer, uh, we're sampling every 7 notes, and we call this the ES2 Sunflower. So we can now enable MIDI through, we can enable monitoring, so we're going to hear the sound coming out from the TC near. So basically auto sample is sending MIDI notes to Logic, Logic always responds to the ASC driver, or at least it responds by default. It will play the ES2 instrument. Of course, it's important that you keep uh, the track selected or it will not play. And then the sound goes through Sunflower at the input of Auto Center and is monitored through our audio device out. Let's try playing something from a master keyboard. Yes, it's working. So now uh, we start uh, the application. And Auto Sampler just created a sampled version of the default ES2 instrument, so we can again quit it. And then we try loading the instrument instead of the ES2, so we load the XS24. We have to refresh the menu so we can see the newly created instrument. And it's here. And we can play it again from, from the master. So we just created uh, an XS24 uh, instrument uh, from the EAS2 and of course we also built the contact uh, structure and NXT versions at the same time. 